If I look at the pattern through my own education, it's always when a, a teacher connected with me as an individual, as, as opposed to just, you know, someone to project information onto. And so now when we think about education, we're like, how do we maximize time with a teacher like that? Uh, so that the teacher's time isn't spent lecturing, grading papers, that can happen at students' own time and pace, but so when they come to class, they get that human interaction. My name is Sal Khan, and I'm the founder of the Khan Academy, which is a not-for-profit with a mission of providing a free world-class education for anyone, anywhere. I was born in Metairie, Louisiana, which is a, a kind of closest suburb of New Orleans. And my parents separated when I was very young, so my mom raised me, myself and my older sister. We weren't well off. She kind of did random jobs, and she kind of did whatever was necessary to uh, make things work. When I went to elementary school, my older sister, Farah, uh, she was three years older than me. And she was just like star student, every teacher's favorite, everything. She was in the gifted program that they took her out of class and she got to do all this enrichment. Because Farah was so good, they had high expectations for me. They would test you for the special programs and eventually I did end up in the same program as my sister. What happened was, you know, there's Miss Krause and Miss Roussel. They both asked me, what do you like? What do you want to do? And I'm like, you're asking me? Like it was the first time that a, you know, kind of an adult in a formal setting had asked that type of thing. I said, oh, I'd like to draw. I like to do puzzles. I like bridges. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, we'll explore those things. And I was like, really? But now when I look back, that program, I think, is what kept my curiosity from being kind of squashed. You know, I kept that, that joy of learning and exploration. So that, that was pretty powerful. It was years later. Working at the hedge fund job, I was based in Boston at the time, and that's where it came out that my cousin Nadia was having trouble in math. She was being tracked into a slower math track, and I, I offered to tutor her. Uh, then word got around the family that free tutoring was going on, and I found myself working with 10, 15 cousins, family, friends, all over the country. Those videos I uploaded onto YouTube, I started telling my cousins, hey, watch these ahead of time. That way when we get on the phone, you can dig deeper. Or I can learn what other topics to make videos on. You know, I just thought it would be a fun family thing to have, like this collection of lessons uh, from Cousin Sal. But it was public, and it soon became clear people who weren't my cousins were watching. Once you get to about 2008, and there's several tens of thousands of people using it, that's where I started to think about, okay, well, what could this be? And I'm a big science fiction buff, and I, you know, the Foundation series, you know, Harry Seldon setting up a foundation of the galaxy's knowledge. So I was like, man, that's so inspiring. Like, what if Khan Academy could be that? That would be cool. That would be cool. Let's go for that. So I was like, let me quit my job. My wife agreed. Let's live off of savings for at most a year to see if we could get it off the ground. It's clearly got some traction. You feel good, it's a good idea. Serious philanthropists think it's a good idea too. But then a lot of those serious philanthropists after about like three meetings say, well, this is a good idea, but it's not exactly what we do. And then you're like, oh. After about five, six months of that, it really eats away at you. I, mean, I was digging into savings about $5,000 a month. You know, that thing that was supposed to be a down payment on a house in another six months would no longer be a down payment on a house. Our first child was born. You're staying up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh my God, I have to support this child. I was getting really insecure and questioning what I had done. It was very stressful. But then about nine months into it, we got our first significant donation, a $10,000 donation. Her name's Andor. I immediately email her. I said, thank you so much for this incredibly generous donation. And she's like, well, you know, you're making a lot of progress. I have one question. How are you supporting yourself? And in as proud of a way as possible, I said, I'm not. And she kind of processed that. 10 minutes later, I get a text message from Ann, and it says, you really need to be supporting yourself. I've just wired you $100,000. And the stress came off my shoulders, you know? I could pay for my expenses now. So that, that was a big deal. Well, Khan Academy is now much more than just me. Uh, we have 100 full-time folks. We have thousands of people around the world who've helped volunteer and push the mission forward. 
Khan Academy is essentially all on the cloud. All of our servers are we're sitting on Google App Engine, so we're sitting on that infrastructure. I still make videos. In a lot of ways, they're the same. You know, they've, they've gotten a little bit better. Uh, the sound is better, and my handwriting has improved dramatically. But Khan Academy is much, much more than, than, than just the videos. We have the interactive exercise platform. We have a place for people to learn uh, coding. We have uh, a partnerships with the college board around the SAT. So it's much, much more. And just in terms of usage, it's grown a hundredfold from when I quit my job. You know, we're going to reach uh, over 100 million students this year. We estimate that roughly between one in four and one in three American students will use us at least once uh, this year. If not for Anne, if not for my wife supporting me in this, if not for Ms. Krause, Ms. Roussel, my sister, if not for my mom deciding to not go back to India and stick it out as a single mother in the U.S., it could be a very divergent reality. Most, if not all human beings, it's innate that we want to learn things. And we just like want to know, is there another way of putting that thing together? Is, you know, what's over that hill? It's kind of fun. We've been thrown into this big puzzle. And I feel like one of the things we should do while we're trying to feed ourselves and pay our bills is figure out what this puzzle is all about.